Hi guys, so I'm going to be talking about these uh, eco plugs from Home Depot. Um, so these are on clearance right now. Um, I've heard that they're going for as cheap as uh, the two pack for ten dollars. Um, there were more than that in Canada, but uh, they're still quite cheap. And so what I'm doing is I'm reverse engineering these to try to put custom firmware on them to make them a little more useful. This shows the internal construction of the device. So. It comes apart quite nicely with just a couple of uh, Phillips screws. You can see on the left hand side is the high power part with the relay that shielded um, the silver block and a half wave rectified cheap power supply, so just a transformer, a diode, and a couple of caps. Um, and that, that gives roughly 5 volts, which ends up getting passed to the digital board, which is on the right, that has a, a more um, precision regulator. So this product came um, with the option of um, power consumption monitoring. So I think that's what that circuit is on the bottom uh, bottom right. There's sort of a, uh, a sensing network, um, but it's not fully populated in, in this version that I have that, that doesn't have that feature. So here you can see a close-up of the back of the digital board. Again, nice Phillips screws. Um, then there's some EMI shielding on the back, which is nice to see. So they did some compliance testing. Um, so it's not uh, it's not quite as bad as some of the ones you see direct from China. Um, it actually seems uh, fairly well made. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. So here's the front of the digital board. Um, you can see the module has a has a metal cap over it, so I can't see the details of the processor. Um, but some things to note here: one, you can see there's a linear regulator on the right. So just to bring it down to the regulated 3.3 volts for the module. Um, there's a power switch and that's externally accessible to turn the, this outlet on and off. And there's a reset switch that's actually hidden from the outside, but that, uh, that should help us in reprogramming it. And then there's a couple of LEDs. Another interesting thing is the um, little 8-pin socket that's not populated there. Um, I assume that's for an external EEPROM. But um, it could be for an ADC because uh, this thing can do the current sensing or power sensing. So uh, I'm not sure if it uses the internal ADC of, of the ESP8266 or an external one. This is the uh, DCAP module. So you can see here that uh, under the can there's some serial flash and a processor and confirmed that's an ESP8266 processor. So it should be reprogrammable. Um, and then what I've done now is I've uh, beeped out the important traces or important signals. Um, really what we need is GPIO 0 to uh, pull low for reprogramming. Um, the serial lines and the uh, power. So here's a basic pinout that you need for programming. Um, so you can see the transmit and receive lines and GPIO 0 and I'll just use a jumper to pull GPI zero during low during reset and then I'll uh, connect it up to a USB serial adapter. So here it is just so with some wires tacked on for programming. Um, I don't know if there's a better way to reprogram it long term but uh, this is a first step and then I can add OTA programming um, so you can program it via the web after I get an initial uh, some initial software on it. This shows the Arduino sketch I've written. Um, now this sketch is, is pretty basic. I threw it together in maybe half an hour or so. But it has some nice libraries. One is um, the over-the-air update library, so you can update it through the web interface. Um, it also has a Wi-Fi manager library, so you give a you get a portal when you first plug it on to configure the Wi-Fi and the settings. Um, I haven't added MQTT yet. That's coming. Um, and it just has basic control of the outlet um, using the power switch on board. I'm using Platformio to uh, program this. It's, it's sort of a embedded system development environment. It works pretty well for this for this application. You could use the Arduino IDE as well if you prefer. There's this uh, ESP8266 switch. So when you initially power up the device before you've uh, connected it to a network, you um, it'll come up in sort of access point mode so that you don't um, you don't need to hard code an SSID or anything like that. So hopefully, connect up now. You can see it's uh, 192.168.4.1.
comes up with a nice nice little uh, gooey okay Password for my Wi Fi. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my main network. So it's now on my uh, local network. So um, what I can do is I can go to ESP8266 switch.local. Um, so that's an MDNS address. So it's a local DNS um, that the module provides. Um, so you don't have to remember the IP address and, and you can see there's a basic web interface um, If you look at the sketch I added some some you know ways you can turn the light on and off by the web and that's enough to get it up and running with open hab um, But I'll continue to extend it to put a web configuration GUI and um, probably add MQTT control which is a, a protocol used for um, Used for Internet of Things kind of applications and and it uh, works well with OpenHab. Thanks for watching. Um, check out my website, thegreatgeekery.com, um, for some of my other projects. Thanks very much.